Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. I'm Sergey Ganesian. The latest Global Peace Index ranked Ukraine among the top 10 most dangerous countries in the world. And today we are going to talk about that with our guest, Mikhailo Samos, a Ukrainian military expert. Mr. Samos, thank you very much for joining me today. Hello. So, Mr. Samos, Ukraine has been ranked among the top 10 most dangerous countries in the world, along with Syria and Libya and Afghanistan and Iraq, basically the countries with ongoing military conflicts within their, uh, within their borders. So, do you, first off, do you agree? Do you think that Ukraine is just as dangerous as these states? Actually, about uh, dangerous, uh, this index is making uh, by counting the three main criteria. It's uh, safety of society, safety and security of society, it's militarization of the country and actually the extent of the conflict. So if uh, we uh, see the statistics, yeah, we see the 623 Ukrainian soldiers were killed by Russians just, just uh, this year. The uh, dozens of civilians uh, killing in, in the zone of conflict in uh, Donbas. We have uh, occupied territory by Russia in uh, Crimea and uh, Donbas. So uh, statistically, uh, yes, when the uh, Institute uh, made this uh, actually analysis, we could say that Ukraine really uh, an unpeaceful country if we're talking about index of peace, of peace index, uh, uh, how uh, this institute, uh, economics and peace, understand it. But talking about the dangerous country, I would say that uh, all of these problems of Ukraine because of Russia. So we have Ukrainian-Russian conflict and we have a very small percentage of our territory occupied by Russia and violence and problems with uh, safety uh, of our society, conflict and militarization of the territory we have just in this very small part of our country. Of course, Crimea by militarization of Russia and Donbas with hard stage of conflict. So we, we, we cannot say that Ukraine is dangerous as a whole. Like 98% of our territory is absolutely safely. I'm not saying s absolutely, but very small part of this, because of Russian aggression, we have this kind of very high level of uh, uh, dangerous for normal people. But we also saw recent, uh, not recently, but over the course of these two years, we saw the uh, attacks in other uh, regions of Ukraine. Uh, there were explosions in Odessa, there were explosions in Kharkiv. There was a situation near the Ukrainian parliament when a somebody threw a grenade and uh, people were killed. Earlier, the Minister of the Interior, Arsene Novakov, said that uh, all, most of these problems are caused by the conflict which you mentioned and uh, the illegal trafficking from the uh, occupied territories. So do you think, uh, is uh, this uh, a problem for the rest of Ukraine? Yeah, sure. Uh, we should remember about the hybrid character of this warfare. I mean, the Russia trying to destabilize situation, not even destabilize situation in Ukraine, but destroy Ukraine as, as a country, as a nation uh, since 2014. And that's why trying to uh, destabilize situation in Odessa or Kharkiv, it's uh, inside of this strategy. Remember that Kharkiv and Odessa, inside of the uh, so-called Novorossiya territory, which is Russia trying to uh, create inside of Ukrainian territory and divide Ukraine as a, as, a, as a country. So, uh, of course, Russia trying, the uh, secret services of uh, Russian Federation trying to uh, make the destabilization uh, to, to uh, create a fear in, in, in uh, Ukraine, in, uh, especially in the, uh, these uh, huge, big cities. By like organizing Kharkiv these attacks, you mean, right? These explosions. That's yes. what you mean? Yes, I, I mean the, uh, when Ukrainian uh, well, p police and uh, secret service trying to find it, who is responsible for, for these explosions. Mostly, majority of these guys were connected to Russian secret services. Like we, we now, we saw the uh, exchange of uh, Ukrainian uh, prisoners uh, and uh, Russian prisoners uh, in, in which has arrived to Moscow because they are connected to Russian secret services. These people are responsible or suspected f uh, for taking uh, part in uh, organizing the Odessa uh, massacre, which took place on the May 2nd, right? Yeah, they, uh, uh, they actually have the, uh, some connection to this, but the, the main uh, problem with uh, this uh, girl and, and uh, man that uh, they trying to create so-called Bessarab, uh, Bessarabia uh, People Republic, 
very, very similar to Donetsk uh, People Republic or, or Lugansk uh, Republic. So it's kind of the same scenario uh, like Donbas. So I, I'd like to say that actually, yeah, always uh, the main problem now in Ukraine is uh, Russian attempts to, to destroy Ukrainian nation. And all of these uh, dangerous, all of these uh, explosions, mostly in majority, uh, connected to Russia. So I, I hope that uh, this conflict will stop. I mean, for example, if we have the uh, withdrawing Russian forces from uh, Donbass, if we see uh, uh, Putin's decision that Russia stop supporting of these so-called people republics, uh, immediately we will have uh, great changes in, in all of this territory. We will uh, see the uh, absolutely stable situation in uh, other regions of Ukraine, but from the other side, uh, Putin could change the uh, uh, center of, uh, of gravity in this uh, uh, military conflict to, to, to Putin on a terroristic act. So um, uh, I'm not sure that uh, everything will be great in uh, uh, next years because everything depends on the uh, situation in Russia actually. And also, we're talking about uh, Russia's involvement, but I'm curious about your opinion on the radical forces uh, in, uh, within Ukraine, because many people in Europe say that uh, Ukraine is a magnet for radicals, both from the outside and from the inside, that uh, people from the West, uh, Western state, uh, regions of Ukraine, uh, basically uh, making provocative actions within Ukraine, like attacking uh, the LGBT, uh, uh, demonstrations and so on. Do you think that uh, it's also a factor that affects the security situation in Ukraine? Uh, last Pride Parade uh, showed that uh, everything uh, is better and better in Ukraine. I mean, the society trying to understand the situation, trying to be more tolerant and trying to uh, actually see Ukraine as a European, uh, with European values, is uh, as uh, uh, basic values for next development of, of our country. So. Yeah, if, if we're talking about the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, internal uh, radicals or so-called ultra-right uh, uh, nationalists in Ukraine, I would say that it's not a major factor of, of uh, influence on Ukrainian security and safety situation in our country. Uh, but, of course, Ukraine and uh, society and state needs to make a lot of steps to make improvements on this uh, uh, side. I mean that, uh, of course, the police uh, reforms, the reforms of all of uh, structure, and actually the, uh, the understanding of all society that uh, radicalism, it's, it's not uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, our, uh, let's say, best uh, solutions for, uh, next future for Ukraine. And actually, I, I would say that, um, uh, let's remember this, uh, about these uh, Russian hooligans, football hooligans in France now. You see the same, the very similar methods which uh, Russia used in uh, so-called Russia, Russian Spring in 2014. S -s some media told that it even the same people participating in now in uh, uh, these uh, uh, conflicts with uh, uh, British uh, fans and uh, with uh, uh, a Russian spring in Ukraine in 2014. So uh, now Europe could understand uh, a little bit what does it mean Russian ag ag aggression in hybrid methods uh, uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, for, for these two years. Uh, Ukraine is in the, in the process of reforming its army, its police, its, uh, all, all, all its major uh, law enforcement agencies. So do you think uh, that uh, while being uh, in the process of trainings, could they basically uh, contain the violence? Talking about, for example, armed forces, we, we have a strategic bulletin adopted just a couple of days ago and uh, Ukrainian president will present this uh, strategic bulletin as a main path for reform in the defense sector on uh, Warsaw Summit, uh, NATO Warsaw Summit uh, in, in uh, uh, less than one month. I would say that as, as an expert, it's a very great document, it's a very great uh, concept and strategy, which, is, which means that actually uh, till 2020, Ukrainian armed forces will be actually ready uh, for uh, joining NATO. In, in all of all of aspects, not just standards, 
but in uh, psychology, in mentality, in understanding of the uh, warfare, in understanding of uh, social standards. Do, do you believe that? Do you believe that? By yeah, this is a problem of implementation because actually, to be uh, honest, in Ukraine, by uh, uh, the last 25 years, we, we've got a dozen of great strategies, but uh, no, no, no of these strategies actually were completed in any uh, cases, and, and that's why we have a problems. In uh, we had a problem in 2014 when Russia uh, started this uh, aggression. We actually didn't have any armed force. In the same time, talking about very effective reform, even compared to armed forces, we have uh, signals that uh, National Guard is more effective. Uh, in, in building uh, effectiveness and capabilities to uh, protect country and protect uh, uh, safety and security of society. Yeah, what you're saying is that they gain in experience, right? Yeah, because uh, and, and what is the main uh, thing, what is the most important, that it looks like uh, in Ministry of Inter Internal Affairs they have, uh, let's say, more open minds for, for uh, uh, reforms because uh, foreign foreign experts, foreign advisors told that uh, in Ministry of Defense they have a strong uh, actually the uh, resilience uh, against uh, reforms and in National Guard opposite situation they uh, uh, get in everything, get in new ideas very fast and uh, uh, maybe after after this strategic bulletin uh, Adaptation, uh, armed forces will change, and Ministry of Defense will uh, take uh, will take all of these uh, new reforms more fast and uh, 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 more effective. Mr. Sama, thank you very much for your answers and for your time. It's much appreciated. Thank you. You've been watching Ukraine Today. I've been joined by Mikhail Samos, a Ukrainian military expert. Many thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next time.